All right, what's up guys and welcome back to the Cinepax YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be going over the Cinepax Glow Effects in Vegas Pro. We're gonna be using the free sample Glow Effects pack you can find at cinepax.store. So go ahead and download that right now. It's free, 100% free. And if you guys like the product, I recommend the full pack, 100%. So let's jump into the tutorial. So I made a quick little timeline here, a little video edit in my uh, Vegas Pro timeline. If we take a look at it, we have something like this and we're gonna sauce it up with some crazy glow effects. So first thing you want to do is you want to go to your project media panel. You can see right here at the bottom right it says project media and you're going to want to import your glow effects. So by doing that you're going to have to put your cursor up here to where it says import media. Click that and then go ahead and navigate to where you saved and extracted your free glow effects. Okay and once we come into the folder of the Cinepax glow effects you'll have three different folders. I'm just going to go ahead and import all of them one by one. So I'm going to highlight my clips and then go ahead and click open and I'm just going to go ahead and open the rest. Okay, so after taking a look at all of the Cinepax sample effects packs, I kind of have a rough idea of what we want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and start. So first thing we want to do is we want to move our cursor to the timeline and go ahead and move it to a space where there's no clips. Go ahead and right click on your mouse and insert a new video track. This will make a new video track on top of your timeline and your clips. So I'm thinking here I'm going to either do a demon face or X out the eyes on him when the slow motion starts and then kind of transitions to the next clip. So doing that, I'm going to go over here to this demon face. I'm going to go ahead and drag that onto my timeline above my clip I want to use. So doing so, we'll bring something like this and we'll have the demon face animation on our timeline. However, we'll notice that the demon face is blacked out. So what we need to do is we need to go over to the left here. And if you don't have these green buttons here, you're going to want to click these little green, these three little dots right here, or I guess bars, go ahead and click that and click edit visible button set. And make sure you're going to want to make sure compositing mode is checked. So make sure that is checked and click OK. So doing so, you'll have a green button right here and then it will be highlighted. Just go ahead and click that. And when you click that, go ahead and change it to add. So once you do that, you'll have pretty much a nice overlay right here. Kind of mask it or track it onto his face so it looks more realistic and to do so is not that hard. So we'll go ahead and go put our cursor on the first frame of the animation which is right here. And we're gonna go ahead and open up the pan and crop. If you can't see the pan and crop, go ahead and uh, scroll into the timeline so the clips will zoom in. And the pan and crop button is this little crop button right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click that. And I'm going to make sure my cursor my sync cursor is selected, it's just an easier workflow that I like to use, and I'm going to go ahead and animate this. So I'm going to move the pan and crop kind of towards his face, and I'm kind of going to cover his face, and then I need to rotate it, so I'm just going to, in my pan and crop window, make sure this little rotate tool is, pops up, and I'm going to rotate it like this. And then I'm just going to move the pan and crop again so it kind of mat, uh, matches his face. So if you look at the animation, it's nowhere near his face, so we're going to have to go frame by frame to kind of match his face, but that's okay. So I'm going to play the animation, and I believe this is the kind of a largest part of the animation. It's, it's more towards the camera right here. So I'm going to match this part up with his face because the workflow would just be easier. So I'm going to move the pan and crop to where his face is, and you can see how the animation is way bigger than his face. It doesn't really look... It just looks like you put the animation there. Don't worry, we can make it smaller. So I'm going to go my pan and crop window, scroll out, and then I'm going to go to one of these sides right here and then just drag it out. And doing so will make the animation smaller. Now I'm going to move the animation towards his face a little bit right here. I'm going to make it a little bit more smaller so I can cover his eyes like that. And that's pretty good for me. I'm a, I guess I can shift it out one more time. I can shift it out at the top. Here, I see. And that looks fine right now. Okay. And you can see once we move this pan and crop, it automatically made a keyframe to where we needed it at. So this workflow is the best in my opinion if you're going to do a lot of keyframes to kind of work in as in like four frames per second, so you really don't have to make a keyframe every second or every frame. So I'm gonna go back to the beginning of the clip and I'm gonna go four frames to the right. So right here on my 
underneath underneath my video preview I'm gonna click this little next frame button or I can click alt right on the keyboard so I'm gonna go one two three four so if we look at our video our animation is not on his face so I'm just gonna go ahead and move the animation two more where the mouth is covering the mouth I'm gonna go four frames again four and move the animation one more time one two three four move it one more time one two three four one two three four and you kind of want to do this for the rest of the animation so I'm just gonna do this really fast so you guys don't I uh, don't waste your time but if you're having trouble make sure you leave a comment down and we can help you so yeah so that's basically the whole animation so I'm going to exit out of the pan and crop now and then we can take a look at it so I have a transition right here or as in like a different clip right here so I'm gonna cut the animation short so I'm going to put my cursor to where the clips separate and press S on the keyboard and then delete the excess. And if you look at it now, we'll have a, a uh, crazy transition or crazy animation like this. That looks cool. So continuing on with the edit, you can see we kind of have a hard cut right here and that looks a little bit ugly. So we're going to use a glow effects transition now. So we're going to be using this impact one as our transition. So let me put it into the timeline. If you take a look at it, It'll do something like this, but we kind of need to have the majority of the effect transition to the the, uh, the clips, if that makes sense. So I like to, what I like to do is I like to go scroll through the effect, scroll through the animation, and find where the animation covers the whole screen. I just like to split the clip right there by pressing S on the keyboard, and I delete the excess, but don't worry, we'll bring it back in later on. It's just I can, it's easier to see the timeline when you work like this. So we have a problem here is that our demon face animation is kind of in the way of our transition animation as in we want the transition animation to uh, to be on top of everything so what we need to do is add another video track so go ahead and put your cursor on a empty space in the timeline insert a new video track and go ahead and drag your impact above all of the clips and I'm gonna put the first frame of my cut right to where my clips collide as in where my clips meet then I'm going to drag this animation out this way into where it begins and if you look at it we we'll have this and then now we need to do is just use the same technique to take out the black so if we go to our left press the green button and we can use add we can also use screen by the way if the add is too bright you can see how the add adds more glow we can use screen and we can also use lighten which gives it a little bit less of a glow so however you guys like it i suggest playing around with these settings lighten screen and add to see which one you guys like the best so if we take a look at it and here let me highlight my media and press shift b for a ram preview here's how our effects look looking pretty sick actually cool but now let's say you have two orange effects and they don't look they don't really match the scene well. You kind of want, let's say, an orange and teal. So to change the color of the animation, it's not that hard. All you need to do is go to your video effects panel and then go to color corrector secondary and then go ahead and drag the default onto one of your animations. For demonstration, we're going to use the transition animation. So I'm going to go ahead and drag the default onto the impact one transition. Now, most of the time, all you need to do is right here where it says rotate hue in this window that popped up. Just go ahead and slide that over and I'm going to slide it into a teal so we have somewhat of an orange and teal look going on. So once you do that, I like this effect it's giving off so I'm going to go ahead and close this and if we shift B to ramp preview this, this is our animation. Alright, so taking a look at the rest of our edit, I think I'm now going to add some horns and some X eyes on this part of the video to where it slow mos into a transition to the next one. So it's super simple, we just have to go through the same process, but since technically we already have two layers or two video tracks with our compositing effects already added, we technically don't need to add another video track unless our animations overlap each other. So I'm almost certain they don't, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the horns and I'm going to drag it onto the layer above this clip 
right here and you can see the compositing effect has already been added and we can see the horns. So all we have to do now is keyframe or keyframe and track the horns onto his head by using the pan crop method. Right now the horns are a little bit too long so I'm going to go to the end of the clip which is right here. I'm going to select the horns, press S on my keyboard that will split the clip and go ahead and delete the excess we don't need. Put my cursor on the beginning of the clip, go ahead and go to the pan and crop and pretty much follow the same steps. Make sure my sync cursor is on and I'm going to go ahead and track it. I'm going to drag it out to make the horns smaller. I'm going to move the pan and crop to fit his head. I'm going to go four frames, three, four, and every four frames I'm going to three, four, match the horns to his head. It's a tedious process, but it's something that we have to do in Vegas Pro. Now you can use a tracker in Vegas Pro, I believe 16 and up. However, sometimes um, it's unreliable and most of the time for these small animations, I just go with the pan crop. So we've come to a little problem here where he is out of this frame and you can see the horns are being cut off. Well, to fix that, all we need to do is we need to go back to our timeline, right click on the horns, properties, and right here where it says maintain aspect ratio, go ahead and select that, click OK, and the horns, you can move them up. And now I need to scale the horns up so it matches his head. Go one, two, three, four. And doing so, you might need to re keyframe your settings since it did change the settings a little bit but most of the time it should be fine but just make sure you double check your keyframes to see if it did track one two three and then now he's off screen and I can move the horns this way so if you take a look at it we'll have this animation with the horns now we're gonna repeat the same process with the eyes we're gonna drag our eyes onto the timeline to the second layer right click properties uncheck maintain aspect ratio Go ahead and delete the excess, easy in that. Go to the pan and crop settings, scroll these out, and go ahead and keyframe the animation. So now with everything put together, we'll have something like this, looking pretty sick. And now I'm just going to add one last transition onto the final cut of the video, which is right here. So I'm going to add one more layer, right click, insert video track, go ahead on this blob wipe. I'm going to drag that onto my clip and I'm going to find the part of the animation where it fills up the whole screen, which is right here. I'm going to cut the clip and I'm going to drag it onto my uh, timeline where the clips are separated, which is right here. Actually right here, yep, where my cursor is. I'm gonna go to the left green button, click add, and if we look at the whole thing, we'll have crazy edits just like this. Oop. Yep, and that's basically how you use the Cinepax Glow Effects in Vegas Pro. Hope you guys liked the tutorial. There will be a discount code in the description for you to download the full pack, which I fully recommend, where you get over hundreds of assets of Glow Effects, animations, and transitions with the Glow Effects bundle. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.